Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about uh, pen enrichment. As you can see, I've got a lot of enrichment in here. I'm kind of grouped them together. I'm going to talk about the various uh, different toys and things that you can have for your dog. Um, the first row that I have, actually, that I'm going to talk about are the plush toys. Uh, now, you want toys that have different sounds in them. Most of these have a squeaker. Now, be careful if you have a terrier or a dog with a strong prey drive and you have cats or dribbles or other things. Encouraging a prey drive might cause problems down the road. Uh, some of these will have little squeakers, uh, or this one's got kind of like a crinkly sound when you do it. It also has the duck sound. I think he's popped it. I don't think it makes the duck sound anymore. Um, that might be what's crinkling. Uh, these, uh, this is by uh, Zippy Paws. These are really high, uh, highly qu high quality. You can hear it's got a little bit of a shake to it. Um, the rest of these are just, you know, we have a moose or a cow and different things along those lines. Um, so I wouldn't have a ton of these, um, and these will get shredded if you have a dog that is a hardy chewer. So these are okay when they're a puppy, but uh, and you might notice that they start destroying them. Now, what a lot of people do is once the dogs start pulling up the stuffing, they throw it away. A good option is to actually just remove all the rest of the stuffing through the hole and leave the skin or the carcass. Um, the dog will continue to play with it. As long as it's not ingesting things, you should be fine. Just be careful. Sometimes they'll put like in a foot or in a nose, they'll put a little bag of like bean balls or uh, you know different plastic balls or things like that. That's something you definitely don't want your dog to ingest. So make sure if it does get ripped that you look, uh, if you remove everything, remove everything so your dog doesn't have anything that get, causes it to get into trouble. Uh, here we have dog, you know, toys that roll. Um, this one I really like. This is called a Whistler. It is glows in the dark and it has a hole on this side and this side so when you throw it, it makes a whistling sound. Um, I live in the Midwest, I have a backyard, and so at night there are a lot of times where I'll get this thing glowing. Go outside the glow, it'll hold the glow for 20, 30 minutes, and I can play fetch my dog in the dark. It's pretty funny to watch this green ball uh, dancing around. Um, tennis balls, be careful of. A lot of dogs, and I have a couple that like to do this, they like to skin it. They pull the skin off, and then uh, some dogs that's sufficient, but some dogs will continue then then pop it and then tear it in little bits. Again, this isn't something you want your dog to ingest. Um, this one's got a little shaker. These have little nubs, which actually helps dogs with their, uh, when they are teething. Um, and these have little crinkle. Now this is the same crinkle that you get with, uh, when you crack, uh, crunch a little uh, plastic water bottle. I've seen a lot of people give their dog a water bottle as a, as a toy. Dogs like this sound. But teaching a dog that it's okay to chew water bottles can make, be very confusing. They might think a 409 bottle is also something that they can chew on or vinegar or something else. So I don't give dogs anything to play with or to chew on unless it is a designated dog toy. Um, so these are great. Um, and these things just kind of roll around and just have different, uh, you know, this helps with dogs with their problem solving. In this row, I have kind of some pull toys. These are things that dogs, you want them to be able to pull and wrestle with another dog. So one dog grabs here and they play tug of war. Um, you have the traditional ropes. Um, these we call DNA. They expand as you pull on it. Um, so basically just having a variety of those. These are for pet safe. What it allows you to do is you can actually put these little cookies on there and then you attach this sucker and turn it on. The dog, it makes it very hard for the dog to get into it, but there is a cookie that they can actually chew off of. So I've got a purple one and a green one here. Um, and on the lines of those things, I've already done a video where we talked about feeding dogs out of uh, toys. Um, or treat dispensing toys. Um, it's something you want to do f up to a certain point, but then you want to get your dog off that and into eating a lot of regular bowls. Um, I found with Quest, it, uh, eating everything off the floor created a little bit of a, a, a shark. Everywhere we went, he was searching the floor for things. So I've now transitioned him out of eating from the bowl and I don't let him eat anything off of the floor. Um, all right, these are Kongs. Now my big dogs have ripped, there are normally three bulbs here. My big dogs have ripped off the, the little bulb to get to the peanut butter. I put peanut butter in these things and after the dogs use them a couple times and clean it out and fill them all the way up, you'll be surprised. There's no way my dog's tongue can get in there. They'll get there. Um, I fill them all the way up a couple of times and then once the dog gets in a habit of eating, then I put them in a freezer and this way they, it lasts a little bit longer and you can use this when you're entertaining some guests and your dog's being a nuisance, it gives them something to do. The, uh, pulling, uh, the, getting the peanut butter out of a hole like this kind of satiates uh, primal desire they have when they kill an animal, they tear a little hole and they pull the flesh out. So this kind of satiates that same uh, instinct. Um, over here we have, and I'm going to do a separate video where we talk about more ingestible uh, enrichment items. Uh, but right here we have uh, an antler. Um, now antlers will last longer if they are intact all the way around. If you have an antler like this that's split down the axis or cut in half, 
they will get the marrow out and they'll bust through one of these faster. Now the trick is if you have a dog that's not into antlers, giving them one of these ones that split down the axis might help them uh, get used to it. These are a great hardy chew toy. They will narrow them, uh, they'll start out, this thing started out about this big and now it's pretty small. But it takes the dogs a while to go through it and this helps because it, uh, it helps with teething, knocking their baby teeth out. Also, when they have their baby or their adult teeth, the more they gnaw on these, they put a flatness to the top so the baby teeth or the regular teeth will not be as sharp. Antlers are expensive, but are really, really, uh, I, I strongly recommend getting them. Um, and, good, and because they're based on weight, go for length, not girth. If you have a really hardy chew dog, you might need to do both. But I see a lot of people get a really thick one and then the dog wears it down to this size and you have a lot of mass that you end up kind of wasting. Uh, this is a water buffalo tusk. If you have a hardy chewing dog, these are amazing. What it is, it's on the water buffalo like this. Um, this one is, you can see it's a little bit hollow in here. You want it fairly solid. Some of them will be completely solid, but I've seen some where it's just like a shell. The dogs will splinter those and they won't last very long. I've had this one for about five years. It started out, I think it was about this big. And you can see they've worked on it, but that's a pretty good investment. They're pretty expensive, but they will, you know, any dog that's like, gonna last five years for the hardy chewy dogs that I have, that's gonna be a, a good one. Um, and then this is like a, an elbow. And again, I'm gonna do something at the green spot where we talk about ingestible things, so I won't talk about that too much. Let me go over here. We have some kind of ball toys. This is a really popular one. It's called a Jolly Ball. It has this triangle that allows the dog to pick it up and carry it around the room. This really helps if the ball is too big. A lot of dogs will actually get frustrated. Brian, who's filming this, has a dog named Max. If the ball is too big, he, he can't bite it. He gets very angry and frustrated with it. So this gives the dog the ability to carry it around. Most dogs pull and chew this thing off. I let my dogs have one toy that's okay for them to destroy because they don't ingest. But if your dog ingests, you wanna make sure you pull the toy away when, that's, when that starts happening. Uh, this is just a regular, you know, just a squishy ball, but you know, balls, dogs like to chase things. These two things are pretty interesting. This one is the much more subdued version of it. These are motion toys. It just moves itself. So this is okay. Uh, this is the introductory one that I used. Then I have this one, which is like it's on crack. <laughs> so some dogs, this will freak them out a little bit. But it's just, it's something that's different. If I can even get it, there we go. Uh, but it's something that's different and so, and it's interactive, so it gets them moving around. So those are helpful. Uh, this one, I've had a lot of clients that really like this. It makes really cool sounds when you roll it. So dogs that are very into balls, it's kind of a funny one to go around. Um, it might become annoying to you after a while, but I really enjoy it. Um, these are uh, nylon bones. Now there's two types of nylon bones. I'm going to talk about them here. We have the nylon bones like this where you can see it's got a lot of flexibility. Then you have this one where there's no flexibility. Uh, you want to start with these and uh, this one Quest has been chewing on, starting to chew little pieces off of. Once they get their baby teeth gone, I would transition to the hard one. Now this, these will also get rough. This one you can kind of see it here. This used to be a Y, so quite a bit longer. But uh, they just gnaw on it, and again, it helps flatten their teeth and gives them something to do. Um, the rough part, I had several clients that throw these away once they get rough. They're rough on purpose. They're supposed to stimulate the dog's gums and help with the teeth uh, when they're getting the baby teeth in. So don't throw them away when they're gone. Now, most people, when they get a nylon bone, they get one like this. It looks like the cartoon bone, which this doesn't actually look like any real bones. Um, I have a whole bunch of them. I have one that looks like this. Um, I don't have the rest of them here. I should put it, well, here's one that looks like a dinosaur. I've got one that looks like a forearm, one that's a letter Y. I've got one that's like a, a donut. It's beige and it's got a bunch of nubs on them. You can get them on Amazon. N-Y-L-A-B-O-N-E is, is what they're called. Again, just make sure they're very rigid. Um, I already went through the, these toys, which is what I use to feed Quest in a different video. Uh, these are a couple that I didn't include in the video. You can put treats here and here. And they've got a kind of, and there's basically four entry points, two on each side. And the dog has to flip it around and it, uh, treats come out. The star was included in the other video, and this is another one. You just put a treat in this reservoir, slide the slider on top of it, the dog's got to figure out to move it over. Again, these are great for treats or, or for food, but you do want to graduate your dog off of the food from them once they get to be about five or six months, perhaps a little bit earlier if your dog becomes interested in chewing everything on the ground. The last three things over there, I, I've got Frisbees, which everybody knows what Frisbees are. Uh, for the uh, regular standard Frisbee like this, it's hard for a lot of dogs to actually pick up when it lands. They, they don't have anywhere to grip it. 
So um, if you have grass or something like that, that's okay for here. If not, you want to get a flexible one. This one's cloth. It also glows in the dark. Be careful. These cloth ones, as you can see, can get destroyed easily. I mean, anything can get destroyed easily. Uh, but my favorite by far is the Kong. It's flexible, so the dog can pick it up pretty easily. Um, now, one thing that this can be torn as well, it's a little bit more durable. When it comes to Kong brand, anything that's black is hardier or, or more robust. Red ones are not as, as uh, durable. So if you have a really hardy chewer, get a black Frisbee instead of a red one. And as soon as they start tearing it, um, you can try to continue using it. I actually have one where this whole circle came out. I was still able to use it as a Frisbee even without that because of the centrifugal force. So um, now one last little thing on the enrichment. I got a basket over here because um, Quest was so small, I got one with a little dip on the side. But I basically put a lot of his toys in there. Now, there's two schools of thought when it comes to enrichment. This is a whole heck of a lot of stuff in here. Um, I left it in here most of the time. What I notice, there's certain toys that are kind of out. He plays with more often. Uh, some of the books that I read, the research I, taught, uh, I did, talked about only providing a handful of toys at a time. So maybe 10 toys at any one time, and then rotate a couple in and out every day so your dog kind of has a little variety and it's more stimulating for them. But your dog is going to chew on stuff. Either you can decide what they chew on or they can decide, and I promise you your dog's going to have more expensive taste. So this is probably about $200 worth of stuff on Amazon. Um, you can get them at Petco or PetSmart or any sort of box store. I prefer locally owned businesses. Uh, they, they're going to give you a little bit more uh, personal attention. Um, the prices of the box stores are pretty expensive. Um, a lot of the stuff you can get on Amazon for about a third to half of the price you're going to find at Petco or PetSmart. So if uh, your cost is a fa uh, factor for you, maybe you, know, you have Amazon Prime, maybe just go to Amazon. So uh, again, getting your dog appropriate things to chew on. One last little thing, this is a really long video. Dogs' brains get into uh, patterns. Uh, same thing we do. We drive to work the same way every day, even though we can take different paths. Dogs have the same mapping of their brain. So the more that they get in a habit of doing something, the more they can, will continue to do so. So the reason I like this playpen area is everything in here is okay for him to chew on. So now he's about five and a half months old. I can let him out in my house. He doesn't chew on my furniture, my carpet, my shoes, all these other things, because these are the things that he's gotten into a habit of chewing on. So I strongly recommend that you invest in your dog's enrichment. And in the next video, we'll talk about some enrichment things that you can get for your dog where they can actually ingest.